Welcome back everyone to Let's Play Strategic Command World War I, episode number 8. So as you can see, something new. Not the number of French cores we've eliminated, but the interface is a little bit different. And although I didn't fully enable it entirely, I'm now using, and you can see it really well showcased here, this beautiful change to the interface, and that is the Blue Max mod. So I, I have not enabled the main map and the units, which I'll do right now, but essentially the this is kind of like, this is a very, I don't know how to describe this artistic style, but this the pastelish colors, this has just screams to me, World War I camouflage as well. And you can see the map has also got this nice pastel look. Um, the new icons, I'm just not used to them yet. They're beautiful, but I do have a little bit of a hard time telling the different units apart. This is the same thing I had when I thought I was going to stick with the uh, the 3D-like icons, but I went to the NATO icons. Um, one complaint maybe is the detachments with the dot right there. The only difference between detachments and cores, the map has this diagonal rain thing on it, which is obscuring things, but if you look down here, this unobstructed view, you can see the three X's right above the unit, just the NATO icon and the dot there instead. That's the only distinguishing thing. The actual unit, the uniform and the soldier is actually identical. So a little bit hard, but I really like the map. There are some places where I can't tell hill from whatever, and maybe it's just because with the rain, it's just harder to see anyway. But um, anyways, for now, I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna leave on <laughs> most things I'm gonna say, but I'm actually gonna turn off the two most, like probably the most time consuming or the biggest impact um, parts of the mod, which is the map and the units. And uh, nowhere is this more clearly shown, by the way, to me. You can see the difference again now. I love the new research screen with this, and we actually need to increase the research for something with the Ottomans. We'll do um, infantry warfare times two. And I think that's everything we wanted to do this turn, so with no points left anyway, might as well end the turn. Oh wait, do we have, no, no, un no new units. Just wanted to make sure. So the, okay, French morale falls due to the Lance of non C. Very good. Unrestricted naval warfare is being a benefit. This is something in Christmas Day 1915. No. I would gladly pay you tomorrow for a hamburger today. So obviously the waiting a year to see a return on our investment is too, just way too far away. Italian nationalists claim Trento and Trieste as Italian territory. Okay, well, I don't know if that means that Italians are trying to go to war now or soon. Indian Cavalry Corps landing at Marseille. Hopefully they're too late to act. And then the Entente is going to continue to blockade us. Karl Lipnick denounces the war in the Reichstag. We have a bonus to spying and intelligence development. And we developed industrial technology level 1. This is actually at 99% last turn. Didn't show it, but... It only, the only option was for it to <laughs> pass. Um, and the Austro-Hungarians have progressed trench warfare. That's very good. Uh, the Ottomans now have, def that's the one we just improved again, infantry warfare development. It's gonna improve their infantry morale. It's very important. So I am using the sound pack from the Blue Max mod. Good, so actually the increased Germany income from the industrial whatever it's going to benefit Austria-Hungary, which is good. And this is the loading screen. I really like this background. I also like it a lot for the, most importantly, for the main game screen. If you could choose which one to use for the game screen and which one to use for the, oh, um, and which one to use for the, oh, interesting. Uh-huh. Submarines are just so effective for us. Now, the red lines, that is something I do need to... Are we not on raid mode? So apparently you have to be on raider mode in order to disrupt these convoys. I'm not doing that. I'm making a big mistake. That's the whole point of having our subs out there. So 
the new sounds, as I said, is the HQ. Volume of the HQ one might be a tad too loud. Oh yeah, we had a surrounding unit. So I'll again mention our losses first, their losses second, but I'm seeing a lot of blue on the French field. That means that I think they're just hunkering down in defense. I didn't even see what that unit attacked. Okay, two, three. One, one. One, three. One, one. So far, not bad. I'm just I'm a little intrigued that the French didn't attack anywhere. That's probably for the best for them. <laughs> yeah, and you can see the detachment for me is much easier. These three X's, that dot, it's very clear. So I, I kind of like a very simplistic style. When you throw too much on the little NATO icons, I don't like it. Um, although I do like the art style of the other ones, the Blue Max icons. So, yeah, they're suffering attrition losses. They might be completely, they might be at four supplier below. So they defeated Von Bay. So sad. Unrestricted. So that's it for the turn. Naval Unrestricted Warfare is helping us out. U.S. are not ups not happy about that. U.S. protests against the enforcement of the Northern Blockade of Germany. Ah, good. We got the Glimvir, I don't know what it'll be called for us. Typhus outbreak, epidemic breaks out in Serbia. Wounded one of their units, maybe. And the Entente continues to blockade us. Is that snow? What was it that that changed color? Is that snow? I don't know. <laughs> No, it's clear. It's clear. Oh my gosh, that's that's fantastic. I think is it snow? I can't really tell. I mean, the fact that it, it's definitely not mud anymore, so that's the good news. And it's not snow because I guess we can still move through it quickly, but this is probably the perfect place for me to put a pause in the video so I can figure out what we need to do. And I think I need to make sure we're entering hunt mode. I don't know if the submarines are automatically destroying the convoys or not. I suspect not since, well, the submarine was doing stuff over here. What mode are you in? You're probably in hunt. Actually, we can tell what mode it's in. Oh, and also I might, I may actually manually do the HQs, but uh, if I do that, it will be off camera. So I can actually auto assist. Yeah, I can detach and do it manually if I want now. I can detach this one, add this one, etc. So up to a limit of seven, which is my current HQ technology, um, which I can showcase here. So yeah, we have command and control two. But if we do go up to the next one, we'll get Command Control 3. I think we get eight attachments instead of seven, etc. Anyways, let me look. All right, well, off camera, I did a lot of work. What you're gonna notice is there's now a blue dot on these HQs in the top left. I finally switched the mode to auto assist. Now, I don't remember the difference between manual and auto assist other than um, I think you can do everything with auto assist and it probably automatically assigns things at the beginning of the turn. I believe that's the difference. So what you're going to see is the HQs now are attaching the units like immediately adjacent to them because I chose that to be the case. So this one has to grab this guy who's a little bit further away, but he's grabbing the ones along the front. Um, this guy, can he even attach one more? No. Okay. Because they have a limit of seven. That's just the current limit of our technology. Tried to choose, pick and choose which ones were going with which HQ. So the worse 
HQs I have taking on the airships and stuff like that, but um, we have like Prince Ruprecht over here, and he's going to pick up all these juicy units. Uh, anyway, we have it. It's funny. We have exactly the number of units that we need um, m plus one. <laughs> we have, uh, sorry, the HQs. So let's see, we have 29 total units, and well, sorry, no, uh, 36 total units then, um, which is each one of these can take, each one of our five HQs takes on seven, and then we have one lonely cavalry unit that has no HQ. <laughs> so if, um, if all goes well, what I'll probably try to do is buy one more HQ, or maybe once we've taken Paris, I'll shift one unit, just one unit, to the Eastern Front, so that we have the perfect ratio of units to HQs. Um, speaking of taking Paris, I've looked at it now, and on the bottom over here, you can see land frozen. So what I suspected was snow, but realized wasn't because its movement is not impacted, is frozen. So that means things are very bad. Uh, why very bad? Because it's going to be very, very challenging to take Paris. But we're going to give it a little old call to try. I, I really, uh, my only goal is to have Christmas in Paris. Right now, all everything is set against that. 97% um, readiness, 110. We'll do our best to try to narrow that down a little bit. I don't know if it'll do anything. Ninety-five, one hundred four. So I think it was one hundred ten. Now and ninety-seven. Now it's ninety-five, one hundred four. It's a minor improvement. Um, we also have a lot of things we can do over here. We actually can push, try to push around Tool, or even try to start cutting off Epinal. So if we do this and this. We are nearly going to be cutting these off, and I, I don't know if that's that bad of a thing. Another thing I realized, although I don't know if I'll be applying it this turn, is you cannot reinforce turn, um, units if you move. So if I do this, this unit would not be able to reinforce. However, I don't know if it's by hook or by crook, I don't know, um, if it's a game bug or not, if you switch two units, they are still eligible to reinforce, which we can probably try to take advantage of on, on different fronts. So if you had a unit, if you were on the defensive at least, and you shift clicked a unit to move it, um, that unit which got pulled off the front could then reinforce, which is obviously immensely valuable. Now I've probably talked about it enough, I guess it's time to get to the action. Here we go. Okay. Wow, okay, so talk about things starting off on a very, very good foot. Because this is still 10, I'm actually gonna move him very aggressively into the marsh down here. Yeah, I, I mean, I believe we're going to start really trying to push hard um, surrounding units and such like that. Um, supply below 5, so 4 or lower, is what's needed to completely eliminate these. I've been reading the manual a little bit more, so I, I, <laughs> it's funny, after playing a lot, I'm only just now reading the manual, but I guess it's just the way it goes sometimes. Next attack will probably come from this angle. Actually, we can move this... No, let's do this one first. Okay, well that made up for it. We had a nice positive one and then we have a, a nice negative one. I don't think it's going to be a good move this unit forward yet, so we can actually retreat this one all the way back. Let's start working on this area first. Okay, that is horrible. The reason why it's horrible is if we actually don't get enough damage done, we may end up using all of our forces. like what I fear is starting to happen here. And we may not get anything done. Let's get this unit in. Okay, we had a 2-0, but now this angle of approach has no longer, is, has, is, is just gone. It's just done. It was gone and done at the same time, which is gone. I think I'm going to do this. Oh god, it's done as well. Okay. Oh my god. Oh my god. 
Oh, you're, we're getting in there. I don't care what we have to do. We're pushing in there. Oh, okay. We can this cavalry. Can, we've taken Paris. I <laughs> thought we wouldn't be able to do it. Oh my lord! Oh my 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 my! That was, oh, that was really something else. So we've taken care of Paris, December nineteenth, nineteen fourteen. Um, this guy cannot even entrench, which honestly, I'm not. I guess I'm not too worried about this unit counterattacking. He's well entrenched. I don't think he's going to be able to completely push out my cavalry. Although, oh, what do you know? Just because my cavalry's in there, now I can swap him back out. Perfect. Well, that worked exceptionally well. This unit is actually having an entrenchment of two immediately, which means, without question, Paris has fallen and will not be retaken. That's the reports being sent up to the higher, uh, higher ups, though, at least. Now, I think that, so let's see, Verdun is at supply of five. That's actually impressive that it has supply of five, so I guess it will not be completely reduced. And we probably could continue to reduce it with our airship, which has the strategic reduction. I don't. I still haven't looked up in the manual. Note to self: do that. Uh, what the uh, replenishment of city points? How that happens? How do they regenerate their points if you do strategic bombing? Is it over time? Is it? Does it require some interaction from the player? These are all things I don't know. And I think if we do this. Okay, that's a. So I, I, one of the things I could do is, as I already mentioned, I have now discovered the ability for people to swap. I could do a swap with the 10 and the 6, and then reinforce that guy in uh, in the port, which is, I'm strongly considering that. The interesting thing to me is that doing the swap actually removes like almost all their points. Um, I think we should be pushing, let's do this, 1-1. One, one. So pretty much everybody attacked on this attack on Paris, except for this guy. Let's have this 6 move back. Have this 10 move in. Do this. Okay, that worked out well. And now you would get a 1 to 1. I wonder if we can swap you. The reason why I ask... Oh, no, you, you can't move there. Not really sure how we want to play this. So we could try to start surrounding this unit as well. Although I don't really, I'm not really worried about the French. They've lost so many units. I'm pretty sure that they're so backlogged on cores that they just need to partially rebuild. You know the the reduced cost rebuild. I'm pretty sure that they're going to have cores upon cores available for that quick rebuild for just forever. So much, so many turns to come. Especially because their income is falling and that list keeps rising. So I, I probably am going to have to cut away again to really think about my options here. But the important thing is Paris has fallen and we've managed to get uh, a 10 straight unit in there. The only one I'm a little un disappointed about is this poor 6. And this 10 cannot move anywhere. It's really completely on its last legs. Is, is there anybody else who can attack though? Probably don't even need to worry about the port. I don't think that they're going to stage an amphibious landing suddenly. Um, this 10, which currently, by the way, does not have any attachment to any HQ, can get to the port. Okay, so we can do it. We, we don't need to worry about it. We'll send it down to the port this way. Which means you... I don't really know what if we want to drive. Let's see if this is a one-to-one. -one. I think I'll take that. Well, that was not... Not impressive. Okay, one-to-one. -one, just to start to reduce him. Okay, and this would be a one-to-one. -one. I don't think we care about that. Let's get this guy into the port. And this unit will probably end up repairing. Okay, so where does that leave us? We can probably start moving our artillery. Oh, we, we actually could try to take Epinal just directly. To go the direct route. How many points is it? 1.75, which is not a lot. So 0.25 points per, I mean, MPP points per, like, whatever this is called, supply? I guess it's supply. 
We're seeing ones and zeros there. It's probably because the ground is frozen. I don't know. Look, we've taken Paris. It's our main objective. So I'm actually not too worried about this one. I think we can actually let the rest of France. I'll come back to it. Let's start working over here. I know that... So this unit should be on hunt mode. It is. So the blue dot, that's how I'm determining that it is on hunt mode. Oh, whoa, whoa, enemy contact. I actually didn't, I was planning to move this guy back to port. I was just going to scout, but I, I fully did not expect there to be an actual unit there. Now, the crazy thing is we could attack this thing and try to destroy it. Do we even have the units available to get, oh, we do. Hmm. We can actually scout with this unit first to make sure the coast is clear. Um, I think this is a bad idea. I don't think we need to do this. All we need to do is turn these guys, the ones that still have some points remaining at least. So the supply, I'm, I'm starting to figure all this out now. Hooray, Tortuga at last. We can turn these guys... Oh, we actually have mines from Austria-Hungary? Ah! Huh. We have three mines? Oh my. Well, I think it's... We want one here, which is going to basically cause everyone not to be able to come in this area. <laughs> so that'll defend this indefinitely. We have it here that still covers it so oh no you can go from here to here so we need it the mine can the furthest south it can be is here to successfully box in this area um yeah well i guess we'll just do that we can still move if we want but i think we'll just stay here for now try to present ourselves as a juicy target and you can't i don't think destroyers act as raiders but Oh, no, you can raid. Yeah, you're now a raider. Okay, good. Set. So this is going to lower the supply by one, but it will act, allow that unit to um, diminish the convoys going this way. So we're finally figuring it out. Okay, so I see the top left of the, of the actual icon, NATO icon, is very important. It's telling us a lot of information, these blue dots. Uh, and we don't we can be on or adjacent to have the same effect so i think that this unit with a supply of eight will move back and let him replenish and also this one we'll move both of these back and this one will also despite its low set this one to uh raid as well so that will definitely deter that line unfortunately this line won't be deterred because i didn't really plan all this out i should have moved this unit to this hex, which would, I mean, right now there these lines aren't running, but if they decide to run next turn, we'll be we'll be back with a vengeance. Uh, we can do the same thing up in the. Oh yeah, we're not worried about that. We actually need to get rid of those mines, which means we are going to repair this unit. I'm kind of, I guess I'm going to be all over the map with this episode, unfortunately. And I remember seeing that there was a tender, and I thought there was also. Let's move this guy. So, so the reason why this unit is not raiding, it's very simple. He can't raid if there's somebody next to him. So these have the light blue, which means they are on hunt mode. But um, they can't do that if there's a unit next to them. So we'll move this one up to, to win the day. Nice. In fact, this one can move back. Oh, beautiful. This one has supply. It's on the supply of five, so... I guess it doesn't matter which of these two we move to, so we'll just leave them there. I think we'll just keep picking on the same one. Ooh, nice. That is good for that. Uh, this unit's definitely going to be able to come up here and raid. Maybe, um... I think that submarines are unique in that they don't have a raid mode, where, so they don't lose supply hanging out and destroying the enemy's convoys. So let me just move this unit one, maybe even just right here, because I want the next submarine to be moving in. 
Okay, good. So it do, it did detect that. You know what? I probably did this all wrong. I just messed that up pretty badly. That's fine. What we'll do is we'll put this Dreadnought into port here. It's at 8 supply, which is still fine. This one's at 7, so we'll put them to port here. This destroyer... We don't have any mines available quite yet, so this one needs to go to port. Which means some of these guys are just going to have to shift out. We have a lot of ports, though. That's the good news. Like, this is just battleship. We don't even need him. I'm just going to here. This battle cruiser has 10 points. Oh, great. So, we'll have this one patrol the channel, then. Defend. Probably not ideal, just because... I think what we want to do is... How do we want to handle this? Well, uh, I don't know. I don't. We don't need to be that aggressive with this unit. We probably want to stack up a big force and go and liberate our northern blockade. I really want to do that. I want to just go and challenge the British Navy. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a disaster, potentially. But it would be a lot of fun to try. So we just need you to kind of move a little bit closer so you're a little bit more... I like this because it gives us full vision of this pass. So I will just go ahead and leave him there. And I think he's far, far enough away that we won't be able to, they won't be able to see him. Get this destroyer into port as well. Probably need to repair that one. Uh, so both of these will end up getting repaired. Wait, did you just went... No, you actually, I can repair you this turn. We will do that. And... Armored cruisers. As far as they can move. So like this one's down to a supply of seven. I probably wasn't really paying attention to that prior to this turn. Um, our new seaplane tender, or I guess this is, yeah, seaplane carrier. Light carrier, whatever you want to call it. It's ready to go. Do we have a destroyer or anything? No. So we'll, we'll still leave the light cruiser over here. Um, this one's at supply of seven, so we'll just have him s go here. The reason why is I want somebody to escort our destroyer next turn when he goes and starts clearing out these destroyers by face tanking them, which is always fun. Um, supply of nine. Yeah, actually, I still think you're worth, well, the Dreadnought's supply of nine. You're much more worth getting supply, because we'll, we'll probably need you next turn. I mean, we may end up just using these. Supply of seven, definitely. Um, supply of seven gets you in, and supply of eight. You may have to wait a turn, because I don't think there are any available ports. Yeah, so we'll just have you move all the way here. And you'll have to wait until next turn. Okay, good. And what are we going to do next? Oh, we have a one battleship with a supply of eight. So same situation here. There's no ports left, so just move you forward. Um, I'm a little scatterbrained, so I'm probably going to put a pause here. Let me just... Okay, let me just think about this. All right. Not too much to think about here. What we have is one unit, uh, these units holding the capital. I guess the main supply is flowing out of the capital. This unit only has supply of four, which means it's actually in jeopardy of being lost entirely. I think we're gonna, ooh. Oh yeah, the zero one is over here. So let's do this attack. Okay. Um, we'll also wanna attack with this unit because it's also a zero one. And why not if it's a zero one, right? Okay, well, it did not end up working out for us, but that's fine. You are capable of moving perfectly over there. That's actually really good news. I don't think we want to do any attacks here. I ideally actually want to move this unit. So it's only going to take one. Is this frozen land as well? It is. And if it's not frozen, it's semi-arid, so... Um, I'm not going to take the one on one especially because it's a core against a detachment. It's not a good trade. Okay, so we know that where those units... <gasps> Can we actually attack the HQ? Okay, we did, but it didn't actually do anything. They're only at supply of four, though. Obviously, I'm not going to leave things like this. I'm going to move this unit here. I don't think they're going to... Like, they have to get here to cut this unit off. They may try to do that, but they'd be leaving a city for free. You know what? I'd let them. Now we can get this unit over here. Oh, actually, we can move. We're just going to shift the whole front... Put this unit here. It's going to take four to do most of these movements. Okay. Okay, one to two. Not ideal, but it's 
we can we can handle it. I think I will move this guy off the beaten path. I'm not thrilled about that, but he should have still decent supply. Let's check. Seven. Okay, that's not bad. I can handle that. And that's going to allow this unit to get in and attack as well. Okay, zero one. Oh! Oh, wow, wow, wow! Does anybody have the capability to move in? <laughs> no. <laughs> You have all your action points, and you still can't get in. Huh. Well, that was good, but then also not good. So, actually, we... That's... Is that the Montenegrin core that we injured last turn? I don't know. I feel like the noose is closing around the neck of the Serbian and the Montenegrin forces. We haven't even had Bulgaria enter the fray, and if that happened, of course, it'd be just simply game over. But we're pushing pretty hard. I like what I'm seeing. They're going to have some tough choices to make next turn. Um, I just... It's so frustrating. If we could eliminate this zone of control, I think we'd be able to... One, two, three... And it takes more than... It takes four or five to get in, and at least two to get in. Darn it. Probably even more than that, since it's a mountain. Yeah. Yeah, it's tough. Oh, I wish we could take Peck this turn. If I hadn't moved this unit, well, if I hadn't moved it, we would we would not have been able to do those attacks. Can I even my HQs get in? <laughs> I'm desperate. <laughs> no. Okay, well, let me see. Is there anybody I can reinforce? Yeah, I did leave this unit intentionally not moving him so he could reinforce. We're in pretty good shape. Even this unit could reinforce. And you know what? I might, I might just do it since... I guess there's some... Oh! They can swap positions, and then I can still reinforce him. I don't know. If we don't reinforce, we can just move up here. This would prepare us for the assault on Nish next turn. Um, what's more important, Nish or Pristina? This one's worth four. The kind of the reason why I like having Nish surrounded is I'm not sure if it's one of those tricky situations like in Hearts Fire and Three, where if you surround the enemy capital. The supply doesn't trickle out from the capital, so you're kind of cheesing the game, but forcing the others not to have any supply. I think we ought to just take Nish next turn, and I think that it might beho behoove us to have units fully in position to do that. So I am going to move this unit up here, since there's not a, a better alternative. I don't want to go one-to-one -one with a detachment, so let's do this. Okay, good. Uh, let's move this unit into this city, or town. And so far we've done naval, the Mediterranean naval. We're done with Serbia now. We are not done with France. I feel like we're done... Oh, the only thing we haven't done is move this unit up here. And I still want them to do the national morale objective, so I think I will keep setting this unit. Yeah, we'll do that. And we're done with naval then. All naval is done. So all we need to do is finish off our western front. And now we need to do the, whoops, the east. Which means I'll probably need to spend another moment deliberating. Which I will do now. Okay, well I did a little bit of setting up of HQs at least. So now this unit is taking these five. The Austro-Hungarians only get five. And... If I can manage to save enough points, which is very unlikely, I would like to increase their... God, I love the research screen now. This just looks so much better. Yeah, command and control, we we probably almost <laughs> have to do it and then worry about where the other points go because it's that important, I feel, now that I see how useful it is. This represents improvements in overall military doctrine, command structures, communications, and generalship. This increases the following by, by one per level, the number of units their HQs can command, their HQs command range, their HQs command rating. So I think it's really important to do, like, probably undervalued, or at least I think I have been undervaluing it. So 277, we'll have 177 left. I think we can spare it. So I'm just going just gonna to blindly do it, hoping that we actually can afford it. Um... There are some units that, like, we can do something like this. I think this is a good way of demonstrating that this unit can now still reinforce. So now we have a 10, which... Oh, it lost its entrenchment, though. 
I think it might still be better to do. This unit also lost its entrenchment, but we can at least reinforce it. It's a little more out of the way. I feel like it's worth doing. This unit It's only going to get 1 to 1 against a unit with 6. I'd rather just get these units up to full. We're at 122, so we're still doing okay. This will be just a replenishment turn. Um, because it's frozen, and I think the frozen basically just, just takes the air, or the... I mean, I don't know if that's the right phrase. takes the air out of your attack. Um, although 0 to 1 is always tempting. What's this guy's deal? Oh, wow, it's just, it's just so weak. Well, I mean, we're also going to be very easily able to kill this unit. And this unit's not even close enough yet, so let me move him forward first. Um, we are leaving that vulnerable now. Didn't think about that, but I want Lemberg to be the site of this attack. So let's see how this attack goes first. Oh, Bruno, we actually took a loss. Uh, painful. I kind of think that this cavalry over here is going to scout. Oh, 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 oh. Well, heck yes! No. <laughs> it failed. Is it worth doing? First of all, this cavalry is, I think, should be able to scout. It doesn't show us that. Should we just advance forward and aggressively defend? We'd be leaving our cities and it'd be but we'd only be subject to cavalry charge. Oh boy. Okay, well we know it's there now. So if we want to defend both, I think we Well we can defend it just at the river, I guess. Put our entrenchments here instead. Not ideal, I don't want to do it this way, but kind of have to defend our flank now. Um, that should cover Prismal or whatever it is. So this unit can move forward. You can go in there. I guess we'll just do this attack. Oh, we took it. We did take a hit. Take a hit. Ooh, an HQ. You know what? I think we're okay to just stay where we are. And entrench. Perfect. Okay. So I know I could do an attack with this unit, but I'm just going to go ahead and reinforce him instead. Yeah, as I said, this is a reinforcement turn. We did lose two on this unit. <laughs> Not ideal. He might even be to really soundly harass next turn. But we have full information on these forces, which is pretty valuable by itself. I would love to attack this a little worried that we'll run into something. Okay, we didn't. That's amazing. Uh, we can't undo it now since we revealed information. This is only going to reveal us. It's only going to do one damage for us. Well, let's still do it. Should be a freebie. And zero one. So the frozen ground, I just think, makes it very difficult to attack. Hmm. So maybe a replenishment turn on the on this front. I think we will just replenish this one. Uh, I wonder if we should start pushing. If we push this way, we can just get between them next turn. We can try to do some flanking stuff. Maybe cut off Kutno and Lods. All right. Well, let me look over here and see what the interesting stuff is. Oh, you can actually get a freebie? Sure. Did not work. O2. One being an O3, which is quite nice. Yeah, this guy actually lost his entrenchment as well, but... I don't think we're going to be able to heal him now that we did that attack. Alright, O2. Ended up being a 1-3. And that ended up being an O2. I didn't, by the way, do auto assist on this guy. We probably could have micromanaged this a little bit better. Eh, it's still okay. The question is, do we want to start pushing out from our nice fortifications at Johannesburg? 
I'm pretty sure Karadno is defended, so this is not a well... An, it's an ill-advised for us to just charge over to Karadno. I think I will do this, though. Because I'm kind of okay with Johannesburg. This, this, like, one separation. I'm fine with this, like, single separation. Um, you don't have it, I don't think, enough movement points to move there and move back. I kind of want that to be my territory because I'm just selfish. <laughs> I want it to be mine. Mm. Oh, we can actually reinforce this unit with an extra. Ooh. Yeah, I think with the Frozen that this is just defensive. It's defensive, defensive. And this episode's really gone on long enough. I think that we're good. We've actually done everything. I'll probably pause the video. Obviously, we need to take the time to figure out what we want to do with our extra points. And, of course, this front. Yeah, but I'm kind of talking myself into the same idea I've just been saying out loud. Is it just time to... Oh, interesting. I honestly do think we'll move this unit forward a little bit more. Still reinforce. That's perfect to me. Um, that 8 is available for reinforcement. Some of these units... Like, how much do we want to push forward? Because this is still a possibility. We could really just hammer Ethanol. Or we could try to bypass it. And there's also the question of which units should we reinforce. Like, this unit can move too, and I don't know if that's actually true. I think we'll just save our shells for a big offensive when it's not frozen. Okay, so we're, we're gonna need this nine down here. Uh, I think we'll reinforce this six. This eight can move forward, actually this, oh wow, 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 wow. Okay, it's clear, we're going. <laughs> Which means we need this eight here. I'm going to be okay leaving this undefended because if they choose to leave the fort to do that, I still have a supply line through this road. And then I can repair both of these units. And I think that's it. So that's... Wow. We're making good progress. I can mop the rest of this stuff up. I think we'll just start equipping these guys well. Like, what about this 10? We can move him to the front. You won't be able to entrench, and that is not entrenched territory yet, but I don't know. We don't really need to do it, or we, it doesn't really benefit us. Yeah, we'll, we'll eventually be attacking these places hard, but there's no sense in doing it right now. So I think we're just going to go ahead and do this and move this guy to the front. So I made up my mind, I committed, and there it is. Well, France, I mean, we have to take a moment to appreciate the fact... The Paris is ours. <laughs> like, this is this was my hope from the very get-go. Really, it's not just that. It's just that the extremely strong fortifications along the, the original French-German border, the Maginot yet line, we've, we've really almost pushed in completely behind it. So it's broken. I mean, Verdun will slowly... Does it slowly fall? I mean, we may have to do some... Painful attacks eventually, but I'm content just to let them sit there for now with this forward so it doesn't get attacked. Um, you might as well entrench. I don't see any reason why you shouldn't. Yeah, and I think we're well set up for a very strong offensive next turn. So one, to, how much is this going to be? 22, which will put us just over 100. I want to make sure that there's nothing else we want to reinforce first, which I'll just pause to do. Because if that is the case, that's going to give us exactly... Uh, enough points to invest another hundred into something, which I, I like very much. Like the sound of that. I think honestly, I think that there's nothing else to do. Let me pause. Yep, not a single other unit qualifies. So there's that, and that will complete this turn. Fantastic progress. I'm very, very, very happy with this. Um, I it's a little bit weird for me uh, that we're making progress in Russia. I have to also remind myself, don't be... Oh, we need to push this HQ forward. At least to there.
think we'll... Is it better to start them in supply or to ram them close to the... I forget. So is this... Let's just move him one forward. So that he can try to deliver more supply. Plus he didn't even have enough units um, attached at the beginning of this turn. He'll be able to attach more next turn. But once he moves, I don't think he can do that this turn. So we'll, we'll take care of that. But yeah, we're in really good shape for the next offensive. And now with the points remaining, which is mostly for uh, the Ottomans. Wait, did the Ottomans join? Did I forget about the Ottomans? Did I completely forget about the Ottomans? They're only at 84%. We didn't join the war yet, did they? I think we're okay. Um, let's do the research. So, we have 100 points to spend. And I'm really of a mind. Oh, 110. I would like to double into that. But, really of the mind now that it's better to invest in things you already invested in to get them faster. And it just basically queues up the points for the next levels. Oh, yeah, spy, spying and intelligence is not good because we already have two points in that. That's fine. I think industrial is what I would do, but not being able to do that, might as well just do command and control. It's either 10% for morale, which would be quite good, or command and control. Or hell, we could do armored research, which is going to start giving us tanks. I don't think we need that. We're going to win the war without tanks, probably. So... Let's just get better command and control first, because we're having problems with that already on the Western Front, so let's do that. And I need to think about what to do with the Ottomans, so what I'm going to do is call this video to a close, think about it off camera, and we'll just do that right before we end the turn in the next video. But for now, I'll see you for Christmas in Paris. Until the next episode, thanks for watching, and take care.